but the topic as you all might have uh, already been informed is effective classroom communication I think it's titled slightly differently uh, what is it called in your program sheet communication skills for effective classrooms so I think it's the same thing so put differently communication skills from the teachers point of view what effective communication skills do teachers need to make classrooms more productive more responsive more effective more result oriented I thought maybe effective classroom communication includes effective use of language language skills and effective body language unless a teacher has good body language effective communication does not happen in the class I also wanted to throw a little light on what are teaching skills what teaching skills come in handy to make our classrooms effective and finally some interaction skills how to make classes more interesting more interactive more participative so I think most of what you said also perhaps will be included in the course of my presentation okay these are the four major areas under which I would like to consider whatever I would like to tell you effective language skills language skills I change the title slightly by calling them English language skills because in our context where we teach at the graduate and postgraduate levels English is the medium of instruction and that's the only language that we use in the classroom that's the only language we are expected to use in our classrooms that's why I call it English language skills in fact language skills are almost the same all over but I'm especially referring them to the English language skills so before I show you the next slide can you make a guess about what language skills are when you think of a language right what the skills do you think are necessary to use that language effectively I want to speak Telugu English Urdu Gujarati whatever but what skills come to my mind when I think of a language if I have to use that language effectively what skill should I possess again please write please take one or two minutes and write down you learnt English at graduate level I think or maybe earlier than that intermediate grammar you were taught grammar right you were taught pronunciation good you were taught vocabulary wonderful somebody said something else tense is a part of grammar tense is a part of grammar phonetics is pronunciation sentence formation what do you call that is it not a part of grammar or something else sentence structure so that's also grammar again yes sir writing so writing was taught to you how to write was taught to you the vocabulary all things associated with vocabulary apart from writing were you taught anything else speaking you were taught speaking also and apart from writing and speaking when you sat in the class what were you doing when the you were listening you were listening to the class right and did you also read any books so you were reading also so these were some basic skills of language so when you want to acquire language skills you need to acquire these skills of language so if you can listen if you can read if you can read and write better you are gradually becoming a better user of that language English language skills include all these apart from these what you talked about a little earlier these skills also are essential you must also improve your grammar right somebody talked about sentence structure somebody have talked about tenses here somebody talked about other things of grammar so grammar of English language English grammar in case your English is not very good still it's not late you can begin improve your English now and you can take the help of your English department which is very very highly I mean qualified for that meritorious here in this university and you can take their help you can have additional programs like this or you can improve it on your own also right improve your grammar skills vocabulary I don't need to emphasize that because you already have told me what kind of words he was talking about lots of different kinds of words that are good for us in the classroom how our vocabulary should be simple how it should be clear how it should be unambiguous right whatever we want to convey we can convey only if we know the right words for that again whatever subject you are teaching 
we need to have the right pronunciation also how many times do we laugh at laugh when we are students no how many times did we laugh at our teachers because they did not pronounce the words right very number of times you are right so not only we laughed at sometimes we remembered teachers for one simple mispronunciation they did we used to call them that sir because he pronounced it wrong if you could not pronounce a word we always dubbed him with a prop i mean with a, with a name so this man cannot pronounce even one simple word like this so pronunciation matters lot i mean big that's why our pronunciation must be better we must constantly try to improve our pronunciation as well non verbal i mean i'll come to that a little later collocations in any language words always occur in associations some words i mean appear always in the in, in the companionship of other words works co occur they exist together they go together so such combinations of words are called collocations and finally usage how to use a word good dictionaries tell you how words need to be used have to have to be used i mean good dictionaries not only tell us vocabulary not only tell pronunciation not only tell mean not only give us the stress not only tell us the grammatical um, part of speech it also tells us how to use those words maybe if you buy a good dictionary and use it regularly your usage will certainly improve interesting variety yeah i think yeah, i mean whenever we are speaking whenever we are using maybe you can begin with writing you can write one paragraph and check it yourself sentences are all those sentences very very similar in structure or is there some variety when you write it's easier you know you can look back you can check back or when you are speaking maybe you can record your voice and you can listen to the and see suppose all of your sentences are too very long and very highly complicated maybe you can make some sentences shorter you can cut them into pieces and make them shorter sentences suppose all your sentences are the same structure i mean same model you can again vocabulary items also right you some of us are very prone to use some words more frequently than the others you can try language allows a lot of variety in fact the beauty of language in its is in its variety the most successful people are those who use language in all its variety even poets use words with different connotations you need not become poets in your class but you can use words very effectively by i mean using them in the right context in the right sense right and use a variety also okay then any other difficulty collocations have not i mean taken much time on that maybe because we will cut it but just for the sake of helping you understand collocations are collocations are words that go together maybe how you sit how you stand how you stand erect right how you hold your head high all these are aspects of posture what are gestures what are gestures how you use your limbs how you use your limbs quite effectively to make a statement of what you want to speak so your hands speak as much as your mouth speaks so as important as your language your hands your body speaks in fact your body speaks much more than the words that you use so somebody said only 7% of communication happens through the vocabulary the words that we use the sentences the language that we use but 35% of it happens through body language so your students are watching you constantly and they are learning by seeing you learning by seeing what's written there learning by seeing a visual that you presented more than listening to you so gestures are very important how to how you use your limbs arms right then facial expression somebody talked about that how do you show what you are speaking about in your face i mean don't think these are important only for language teachers No, that's not correct. Whatever subject you are teaching, a big machine is different from a small machine. Is it? So you can show it in your face, right? So expression, including smile, the eye contact. What is good eye contact? What, what does good eye contact mean? Is this good eye contact? No. <laughs> good eye contact. I am seeing you. <laughs> Sorry. what that's what i'm telling you ha so, so it, that's a stare yes that's a stare okay what else is a good contact okay suppose i look like this is it good eye contact 
No? Yes or no? I am seeing everybody. I am seeing everybody. No? Why is it not good eye contact? It is, I mean, an eye contact is the teacher's ability to see every student in the eye, but at the same time not staring anybody. To keep monitoring the class and to keep an eye on what's happening in the class, he needs to develop a good global eye contact. Global means everybody, all sections. Some young teachers, I mean, either because they are shy or because they are not very comfortable, they are nervous or whatever be the reason, they shy away from, I mean, looking at students. They either look away, right? Or they turn to the board and keep seeing the board only all the while. Or if there is a favorite student in the class, they always look at that student only. Right? These things happen in the class, especially if you are new to teaching. They happen. But if you may practice, you can learn the skill of developing a global eye contact. There are again lots of skills that you can develop. Maybe any good book on body language will teach you how to develop that. And there are techniques that you can use to develop good eye contact. We don't have time for that, but I just would like to tell you that you need to take care of your eye contact. Then active movement. So you can either speak from one place you can remain in one place and teach the whole class. Right? Suppose you are invited to be a chief guest at a function and there is a podium like this there available and you stand behind the podium and you make it address all the... Well, maybe 40 minutes, 50 minutes you speak behind the podium and you make it. But in a classroom situation, I think that's not a very good idea. There are some teachers who confine themselves to the days at the platform or whatever you have a raised podium, platform, whatever is there and then you stand there and the entire class happens from there only. Unless you are continuously using the board, right? Unless you are using con the board continuously, there is, I think, a, it's a better idea to move about in the class. Even when you are using the board, instead of standing in one place there, maybe you can move about in the class so that every other minute, maybe you are looking around, you are watching students, I mean, you are keeping a constant eye on the students and uh, m m make your students realize that you have not lost contact with them. A class can easily be lost. Don't allow that to happen. So, move about in the class physically, enthusiastically. Right? Then finally, physical distance. This is a cultural thing. In some cultures, in some places, maybe standing too very close to your student is very, very embarrassing. Especially during examinations and all that, I have seen teachers coming very close, standing behind them, reading what they are writing. Right? And that is very, very inconvenient to the students. And in some cultures, in fact, standing very close to a student of the other gender, maybe, in fact, it can lead to some trouble also. Oh, I mean, I will come to that a little later again. So, physical distance. This also is something that need, you need to take care of as a part of body language. Three other things that are included in a separate slide. And I thought of telling you about the volume of your voice, how loud you should be in a class, depending on the size of the class. So, some teachers cannot change the volume of their voice depending on the size of the class. They shout the same length, same loudness, whatever they say. Even if there are 10 students before them, they shout so loud that all the next <laughs> class in the surrounding are disturbed. I had many teachers like that. They used to shout. I mean, if somebody, somebody new came to the college, you know, they would get worried. What is happening here? So very loud there. Some people speak so very soft. Even people standing in the front rows also, they cannot dance. They cannot follow them because it is too very soft. You have to, you have to strain your ears to listen to them. Unless you are straining your ears, you can, it's not audible at all. So you must become conscious of the audibility level, right? The level at which you speak, depending on the size of the class, the environment. Maybe some classrooms are not very uh, congenial for holding a class. They're actually, there's some classrooms are very loud noise. The environment also may not be very suitable. Some fans and others installed might be making noise. So you have to take all those things into account. I, when I taught in a village in Medak district, the, the whole college was built next to the main road. And there used to be so many trucks passing by throughout the day, blowing those loud horns. And I mean, 
speaking in a low volume was, I mean, just impossible. Even a small classroom also we had to shout very loud. We have to take all those things into account and we have to use the right volume. Then the tone. What tone is it? I mean, do you sound confident? Do you sound nervous when you speak in the class? I mean, students are very good judges. Students know how confident you are right on the first day they can judge. How new you are to teaching. Right? The moment they listen to you for the first few minutes, they can make a guess what kind of a teacher you are, what are your abilities, how strong you are, how confident you are, how assuring your tone is, etc. Then finally, do you modulate your voice? Do you speak in the same tone or do you modulate it? There are there ups and downs in your voice levels. Again, depending on the subject, depending on the content. Instead of, uh, just now, as I told you, a big machine is different from a big machine. See, it must sound when you, when you say, so yesterday I had a very pleasant experience. It's different from yesterday I had a pleasant experience. I mean, it, it must sound, whatever you say, it must, it must, it must uh, the people must realize it, understand it through your voice. Your voice speaks, not only your language. So learn. There are again lots of different techniques. Books can give you lots of techniques how to culture your voice. Right? Voice can be cultured. And great masters of oratory, starting from Swami Vivekananda and uh, other great masters, I mean, even to the modern day powerful speakers, they practice, they culture their tone. And there are techniques, take tips about that and then you can try some of them. And in case your voice is very low for a big class, you can cultivate that, you can make it louder, you can also learn the modulations and you can become better users of language.